Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Sun's shining. We had rain yesterday. So last night after I left, or after the end of the video, we had some more rain come through. We ended up with just over eight tenths total here at the farm. Awesome. We did not get that much in our irrigated field though. So we're heading up there right now to take a look around. I did not go up and start the pump last night because it did rain a little bit more. I don't know how much it rained up there. We're gonna go look. If it looks somewhat dry, we're gonna start the pump up. some because we have puddles in I get it, it's the low spot but it's, it's a path that has not been watered in quite some time and it's muddy there so it definitely we got more rain up here later I don't think we had an inch or half an inch even um, I can still see where there's more it's wetter right under the base of the plants than in the middle of the rows but it did rain so, do I start the irrigation up and just stay ahead of it? Or do we shut it down for a day or two and let things dry up a little bit? Kind of wanted to get back into here where I had checked it yesterday after the first rain and it was, it was plenty dry. You can see over here where I kicked the dirt around yesterday after we had gotten all that rain at home. It's definitely wetter right now. Um, but you can see here it's really wet along the base of those stalks and then right here it's it's much drier uh, I would say we maybe had a tenth of an inch less than two tenths of an inch of rain up here somewhere in that tenth to two tenths would be my guess I really need some rain gauges up here to put one out not only just to know how much it rains but to be able to check my irrigation stuff I thought I had some golden harvest rain gauges I usually do to give out to people but apparently I am out, so I don't have any right now. I know that's wet from when we were sitting there irrigating, but I look in one spot and I think, eh, it's not too wet here. And then I look at another and I think, oh, it looks like it rained more here. So I'm not real sure, but I think I'm deciding to hold off on starting up the Traveler this morning. So our corn's not stressed right now, so it's okay to have that water off. Um, I would like to stay ahead of it and not let it get stressed, so that's why I'm thinking oh, maybe we should keep it going, but the other factor here is that I've got an airplane showing up sometime today or tomorrow from what they tell me. I don't know when, so I'm trying to dial that in and asking them, hey, you know, when are you coming? Um, but I don't really want to leave that water pumping while the plane is there, because wet corn or the, where it's watering, it won't get very good fungicide coverage. I'm sure a pilot doesn't want to have to mess with dodging a water cannon out in the field and uh, it just would be better for it to be off. And so, I've got that meeting today that I have to go to, uh, the soybean clinic. I'm going to be gone from 9 to 4. If the plane shows up between then and I'm not here and I don't see it, I can't shut the water off. So, I think we're just going to leave it off and, and we'll probably think about starting it back up tonight. We'll come look at it when we get back. The boys were pretty upset it rained last night and they couldn't ride their go-kart, so I told them I'd bring them over this morning for a few minutes. They're still very cautious, which is a good thing. We need them to be cautious, to be careful. Four years old. He's doing pretty good. We're learning throttle control. The, the gator, the electric gator, it's on or off. There's no variable throttle to it. So that's what he's, he's figuring out with the go-kart. Okay, well, I took the boys home. Um, I have got this meeting, so I'll tell you about it again. Um, so a gentleman by the name of Chris Weaver is uh, doing some presentations for us for Golden Harvest. Um, Chris is a farmer from Maryland and he is a world record holder for soybean production at 158 bushels per acre. That's impressive. More than double our best beans ever. So uh, he is talking to us about how he's doing that, what things are important to look at and to, to do. And so uh, we're going to go learn from him. 
Uh, Chris is actually a Golden Harvest dealer out there in Maryland, so he knows our products and he's uh, a great resource for us to have. So I don't know that I'll be able to film anything of that talk too much because these high yield guys are they're a little secretive sometimes or at least not um, wanting stuff to be super published. So putting it on YouTube is probably a bad idea. But we'll see how he's doing. If I get a chance, maybe we'll, we'll talk to him a little bit. So stay tuned. Thank you for having me today, guys. So Tuesday we gave a speech. secretary throws it down, but I will look at everybody's email attention so they'll be back in football season. Apparently clean, clean equipment is key to raising good soybeans. Well, we got that one down, check. Mr. We learned a little. We learned a lot, actually. I got a lot of really good information question is how do we implement it how do we do it how do i convince the other people in our operation to try it and to do it and some of the things like ah. next year i'm going to raise 100 bushel soybeans i'm going for 300 bushel corn this year next year we're doing 100 bushel soybeans big thanks to chris he was uh he was a very very good resource super friendly willing to answer any questions anybody wanted to ask of him stayed as long as you want um that was a really good informational session. So for those of you that uh, are in my local area, if um, you've ever thought about buying some Golden Harvest Seed, let me know. This is the kind of stuff that we put on. And I know I didn't film a lot of that. It was It's hard to do in front of people and you know all of that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, Golden Harvest is very good at putting the information out there to help our growers be successful. I'm not just going to sell you a bag of seed and come back next year and sell you another bag of seed or try to. I'm going to help much as I can as much as you'll let me so um, that's my plug for that we've got to get back because I think we've got a haggy coming this afternoon I, the plane may have already been there we may have missed it I don't know uh, hopefully we'll find out here and uh, maybe we'll catch it yet I don't know but we're gonna get back there ASAP and uh, see what's going on we'll get our water fired up if possible if necessary and uh, have some fun spraying some corn today okay we are back at the farm. I have no idea whether the plane has been here and come and gone or not. I'll ask Dad if he's seen it. Phil hasn't. Um, but we got to get ready for the haggy anyway. So it looks like we got to pump out the water in our dike here. I am making sure that our water tanks are full. And uh, we got to get the tender trailer hooked up to a semi. We had unhooked the tender trailer to hook up a grain trailer. So we got to switch them back. All right, I have got a plan for the fungicide and what we're gonna spray. So this is all the fields. This is how many acres are in the field. This is how many acres we're gonna spray. Some of them get grouped together. Like these two fields here is a 37 and a 54. We're gonna spray 70 of that total. Or like a 42 and a 39, that's 81 total. We're gonna spray 70 of it. 70 because 70 acres is how many you can do on three jugs of the fungicide. It's a 13.7 ounce rate. They're two and a half gallon jugs. So seven and a half gallons will do right at 70 acres, uh, I try and make things easy. So that's how we're gonna do that. I've got the hybrids so that I can, uh, just to help plan which ones we're gonna do. These are the fields I feel like are ready now. These fields are not quite ready, um, but here at Waldron, these are the fields down to Berkey that we are gonna do. We're gonna spray a lot of corn. There's over a thousand acres on this list. So the only thing I need to do yet is figure out what our tank mix partners are. I have a few of these Ag Explore products. Um, I've got some of that Octane, which is a sugar carbon source, and some of this Onward, actually have Onward Max, which is a PGR. And um, uh, we're gonna test, do some test strips on those. So I have to figure out which ones of these strips we're gonna add that to. All right, uh, I got that stuff figured out, I think. I have not, I still have no idea whether this plane showed up. That's what I hate about it, is that I have no freaking clue when they're coming, what they're, what, whether they've even done it or not. They don't even give me an application map to say, this is what we did, this is what we covered. And that's why airplanes are unreliable for me. Um, unless I'm around 100% of the time to go to catch it. But with the Haggy and him, it gives me a map, shows me exactly what it is. Not only just gives me a map, like it gives me the digital file so I can put it into my John Deere with my record keeping and use it for analysis and everything else, and it's awesome. Um, so, anyway, point being, my kids have a t-ball game. I'm not real thrilled that I have to drive a half an hour to catch half of a t-ball game, but we're gonna go and do that. And 
then come back and see. I tried calling the guy with the Hagen. He didn't answer his phone, so I don't know when he's coming. Hopefully not in the next hour and a half. That's what we're, that's what we're hoping. So we've got water pumping. I've got the list figured out. I've got the chemicals figured out. So we're ready. I'm just not there right now. Also, why would they have these games at 5 o'clock on a weeknight? Do you people not have jobs? Like, I don't understand how people can get there for that. My job's as flexible as any of them out there. and I don't... Uh, six is better, but let's do them at 7 o'clock at night. Let's do that. Oh, hey. Uh, so I went to that t-ball game, and while I was on my way there, I got a call from uh, my... Peggy guy, and uh, he is coming first thing in the morning. Did not make it tonight. You can tell it's much later. We're going to start the irrigation up. That's where we're going. Um, but anyway, he uh, he's coming first thing in the morning, like 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So uh, I came back after the game, got everything ready for tomorrow. I got the chemicals out. I got water pumping, which we had before. I uh, hooked the tender trailer up to the semi and put uh, two sprayer batches worth of water and chem on there so we can help tender to them and stuff um we got nine sprayer loads to do tomorrow uh 600 and some odd acres it's gonna it's gonna take a little while but we're gonna try and do it as fast as we can and keep him moving and, and get him out of here if we can so um that's that's the plan for tomorrow i still have no idea whether the plane showed up today whether it's coming tomorrow whether they're just gonna say ah, we aren't gonna do it because we don't have to and Maybe they won't do it and they'll send me a bill. I don't know. That's the problem. I can't track them. So anyway, we're going to go. We're going to start the water up. Sweet. Oh, the, the water finally made it here. You can hear all the air purging through the hose. We still got quite a mud hole between here and the truck. It's super fun in the dark, especially. But it is not as much water as was there the other day. So I think we're good here. My uh, Farm HQ box has still got a blue light. It is connected. So that's good. And this is a 10-hour pull. It's a full, full pull. Should be done at a little after 8. All right, guys. Water's pumping. And uh, it'll be done sometime, I don't know, 8.30 in the morning, something like that. So... Uh, thanks for watching today. Hit that like and subscribe button. Questions, comments, leave them down below. And we will see you again bright and early tomorrow morning. Haggy day. It's going to be a fun one. We'll have the drone up. We'll see what we can do. Uh, hopefully, they'll let me ride with them and film a little bit. And, uh, should be fun. So, maybe there'll be a plane to film too. Maybe it will just make a heck of a day out of it. I have no idea. So, uh, questions, comments, leave them down below. See you guys. Thanks for watching.